Hi, my name is Apostle Mark Tarko, and in this series, I'm going to be talking about uh, gender relations and social cohesion. That simply means the relationship between men and women and how that affects society. And I'm, I'll start by making a statement. Uh, and th this statement might be shocking to you, but I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not asking you to, um, to, to swallow it. I'm just asking you to listen and consider what I'm saying. And this is the statement. Men are the most endangered species of our time. Men are the most endangered species of our time. And in this uh, series, I'm going to be telling you why. I'll explain to you why, using statistics and, of course, my research uh, findings. I've worked in four continents, lived and worked in four continents, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in America. And um, the relationships that uh, prevail today amongst men and women, though they are slightly di different in, in every, every continent. There's a basic underlining uh, uh, bottom line that, that, uh, uh, that drives these relationships. And as society evolves, the relationship changes. Um, in my studies in gender studies, postgraduate studies in gender, in family, and in conflict, I've been helped to see through the eyes of my female professors. And I salute uh, Professor Domako Ampofu. I salute uh, Professor uh, Techua Menu. I salute Professor Christine Opong, uh, Brigitte uh, uh, Saki, who all helped me to see through the eyes of women and to be able to experience what women, uh, to know what women go through. Before I did postgraduate studies in, in gender and family studies, I didn't know. I could only think as a man. But through these studies, they have helped me to see through their eyes, to see through the eyes of women. Most of the time, men fail to understand women, and women fail to understand men. And everyone is in his own corner. Where we accuse each other. We fail to understand each other. But I understand that women have suffered throughout the generations, across the, the centuries, you know, atrocities in the hands of some men. I get it. I understand that women have suffered through certain traditions and cultures, and sometimes legislations that marginalize women. I get it. I also get it that certain cultural practices have subordinated women and even made women to go through uh, trauma, spiritual trauma, psychological trauma, physical trauma, emotional trauma. I get it. Practices like, uh, you know, infibulation in East Africa, so, so difficult to take today. I get it. M women you know, being treated like second-class citizens. I get it. But now what is happening is that the pendulum has swung to the extreme end. What Satan hates is balance. Men were the ones who were on the offensive, and women were at the receiving end. After my training, I spent all my years defending women. I worked with them. I counseled them. Sometimes I accompanied them to the police when they, had to, they, they, they were suffering from injustices and, and sometimes violence from men. I've always stood with women. And in, in, before coming here to, to, to speak to you, I discussed this with my wife. My wife is 100% with me and what I'm going to say. So it's not like somebody who is against women, no. I have been a friend to women all my life. Now, I have to say that women are, the offen offen are on the offensive and men are the, are the receiving end. The pendulum has reached the other extreme. 
and women are using their femininity to oppress men. Men are being oppressed, and because of the social constructs that make men to behave in a certain way and make women to do, behave in a different way, when men begin to suffer some of these things being meted out by the feminist group, the consequences are far, far, far more devastating than they are to women. Socially, women are socialized to, to express themselves. They cry when they need to. And women, uh, men always give them their shoulders to cry on. Women are socialized to talk, and they are good talkers. Women are socialized to complain, to nag, right? So when a woman is nagging and a woman is crying or, or talking or gossiping, the society says, that's women. That's women. A man will say one word and a woman will say seven words. That's how they are. And these are social constructs. This is how they were trained to behave in society. Men, on the other hand, are socialized to not talk, but to act. Men are socialized not to express feelings, emotions. So a man should not cry even when he's in pain. A man should, a man should not complain. A man should be bold, brave, strong. A man cannot be seen shedding tears or should not be seen shedding tears. A man must be the protector and, 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 and the provider. These are the social constructs. And what, what, what is the consequence? When women begin to use their strength and, 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 and the, 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 the power of femininity and the power of the press of today, and the power of legislation, when these forces come together and back women, together with what they are socialized to do, then these factors drive men to an extreme point where the society is in danger. The human, the male species are in danger. Now, when we talk about women, women's socialization, because they are socialized to talk, they talk freely. And today, they are talking a lot. They are complaining a lot. And the whole world is being socialized to listen to them. So all that we've been doing, at least for the past two years, is to listen to women. We listen to them express their feelings freely. And it's a crime, it's a sin not to listen to a woman. So the social media, the electronic media are full of women complaining, women talking, women expressing their feelings. Good. They need to tell us what they feel. But there's something happening that we need to take a second look at. When women begin to cons consistently take down men, especially successful men, that is dangerous. It's almost as if there are some women waiting out there to take down a man who is seen as being successful or on his way to success. We've all seen over the first year women who accuse men of sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and uh, being sexist. These are terms, modern terms, that are very difficult to explain. 
Now, when you say sexist, you cannot even say a woman is beautiful. A man cannot tell a woman you're beautiful. Or you can't even say, I like your dress. That would be sexist. Now, people have come, women have come and complained and, and even accused men of sexual harassment in the past. Just a few days ago, one Lucy Flores accused the former vice president, Joe Biden, of having planted a kiss on her head four years ago, uh, 2014, not four years ago, in 2014. And according to her, you know, in a CNN bulletin, she thinks because of that incident, the vice president should not present, he's disqualified to present himself as a candidate, a presidential uh, candidate for the Democratic Party, the Democrats. And I, I listened to the news item and I said, wait a minute. She is now telling us what she felt in 2014. And that is what all the women who come up from, that's what they're doing. They'll tell us what they felt so many years ago. And they believe that they, they, the society wants everyone to take their word for gospel, to take their word as being true. Lucy Flores said that she was shocked. She was confused when Joe Biden planted a kiss on her head. What did she do at that time? What did she say at that time? She said nothing. Until even when the vice president was chosen as the vice presidential candidate by uh, President Obama or by Obama, she didn't say anything. Now that Joe Biden is about to present himself as a candidate for presidency, she suddenly comes up and says, he is disqualified to be president because in 2014, he planted a kiss at the back of her head. And everybody, the media, suddenly jump in. Is he disqualified? And she says, yes. And everybody is putting pressure on the vice president, on Joe Biden, to come and ask for forgiveness or to just, you know, stay away from the presidential race. Even some of the uh, 2020 presidential candidates of the Democratic Party. It's unfortunate. For all you know, these women at the time that the incidents took place, they were giggling. They were happy. They were benefiting from the, you know, the, the fact that, you know, a, a celebrity had come close to them, had touched them. That may have been, or that was, I can say that was, the culture of the time. What we're doing, the wrong thing that we're doing as a society is judging people today according to the culture of yesterday. There were things that the society didn't frown upon at all several years ago. There were things that were generally accepted several years ago, but which today are not accepted. Right. So when we say women should talk, and especially they having the luxury of riding on the waves of the Me Too movement, everyone is saying Me Too, Me Too, Me Too. They're coming out of wherever they are and, and, and beginning to complain. A second woman has come up and said Me Too as regards the uh, Vice President Joe Biden. And any time a woman comes out and, and, and accuses a man, the culture today is everybody jumps up to kill, to drown that man, 
to destroy that man. And they will know no respite until that man has been totally destroyed. What is happening to our society? What is happening? Now, what is going on is the men are recalling into their shells because men are socialized not to talk, not to express them, them, their feelings, not to show emotions. Unlike the women who are socialized to talk. So they are talking and everybody is hearing them. But the men are not talking. The, man, the men are recoiling into their shells and, you know, choosing to do other things that are nefarious to themselves and to the society. I want to get into a very you know, um, objective discussion on this topic. And as many as are interested in this topic can join me as we discuss. It's a topic that is sensitive and many people would not want to go into that area because you have to be politically correct. Not only political, you have to be socially correct. And men of God have to be they have to be religiously correct. So men of God and pastors will not like to go into the area for fear of offending their denominations, for fear of losing their positions in the church as a pastor. Well, I have no denomination to lose. I have no denomination to, to, to defend. Nobody pays me. So I think I can speak to this situation and I can engage in a free conversation and bring to you the research that I've gathered so far from the different places that I've been and the experiences that I've had with women and with men, what is going on the experiences with men today, as a man of God, the experiences with men. Recently, in the um, uh, this congregation of the Liberty University, um, Jordan uh, Peterson was invited as a speaker, and he was being interviewed, actually, uh, and during the interview, something spectacular happened. A man that we got to know later on as David rushed to the pulpit, rushed to uh, the podium, shouting, help me, help me, help me. I need help. So the pastors had to stop and go and minister to this man. Uh, the video was cut, but you could hear the background. You could hear the man crying and the pastors ministering to him. I had my own experience in New Jersey in 2014. Uh, no, 2012. When I was having an all-night meeting and suddenly a man rushed into the room, the hall, where we were having the meeting, and began to shout the same way, help me, I need help, I need help. So I took him outside and I began to talk to him. I said, what's wrong with you? And he said he was on his way to commit suicide. But when he got to the place, a voice just told him, stop, get down and go into that room, that house. So he came down and, and just walked in. And he began to, he saw people praying and just began to say, help me, I need help, I need help. When I talked to him some more, I got to realize that indeed he was on his way to commit suicide. He was on, a way, on his way to a bridge. He was driving to a bridge. 
in order to throw himself down into the water. Why was he going to do that? He had been literally kicked out of his house by his wife. There was a conflict and his wife had driven him out of the house. He had had enough. There was no one to talk to. He was a man. He should be brave. He should endure. He should not complain. He should not cry. The only other alternative for him is to kill himself. Well, thanks be to God that he came there. I prayed for him and I began to talk to him using the word of God. The word of God has power. The words of the Lord Jesus Christ are powerful. They can break every yoke. I believe in that. So when I began to talk to him, he just began to cry and cry and cry. And I explained to him the reason that he needed to live. The reason that he should not kill himself. And later on, after he had accepted and calmed down and got back into his right senses, I asked him, can I talk to a wife? Can I speak to a wife? He said, yes. And he gave me the number. I called the number. The wife picked. And I talked to her. I said, your husband is here with me. I told her what was going to happen. And I began to speak to her the word of God. I began to counsel her. Suddenly I heard at the other end of the phone tears. She was crying. She broke down. The power of God had brought her back into her senses. The power of God had removed the blindfold. So after talking and, and just repenting and asking for forgiveness, I asked him, can your husband come home? Say, yes, let him come home right now. I prayed with them both. I put the phone on speaker and prayed with them both. And I let the man go back home. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that men are going to, through things that you cannot imagine. Today, it's at a peak. They had always gone through a lot of things, but because of the culture, the socialization of they not being ready to talk, not being expected to talk, not being expected to complain, being, you know, or expected to be bold and strong and enduring, expected to have enough shock absorbers. We were not hearing about them. And today we are not hearing about them because unlike the women who should be listened to, the men are not listened to. When there's a conflict at home and a policeman comes home, he listens to the woman and only hears the man. The man can say whatever he wants to say. The policeman can just hear some blah, blah, blah. But he will listen to the woman. Most of the time, the experience I've had with men is that when the policeman comes to the house, the first thing is, did he touch you? He asked the woman, did he touch you? If the woman says yes, that's it. They take the, woman, the man away. When it comes to somebody having to leave the home, it's the man that has to leave the home. Men are even afraid today to impregnate a woman because they've realized that childbirth or children have been weaponized against men. Where a woman, there's this pull effect. Of course, there's a push effect where there can be a conflict, a conjugal conflict of any sort. But there's a greater pull effect of child support, which make men, uh, women very easily divorce, very easily drive their men away from home, or very, very easily call the police. And what is happening is men are even afraid to impregnate a woman because he, fe he fears that when he gives birth to a child, that child will be used as a weapon against him. For all his life, he'll be paying child support. 
These statistics are available, but no one is talking about them. No one knows them because the ones that have to be listened to are the women. And they are really talking, really talking. And all that we are being told to do now is to listen to them. All that we're doing now is to listen to them one after the other. Yes, women need to be listened to. And I do not condone any violence against any woman. I've never touched my wife. Been married for 32 years now. I've never raised my hand to touch my wife. Never. And I'll never do that. And again, as I said, I've stood with women. I've fought for women all my life. But now, we need to fight for men. Someone needs to speak for men. Fatherhood need to be, needs to be restored. Fatherless children, 19.7 million American children are fatherless. 19.7 million. That is one, uh, uh, one out of every four children in America are fatherless. What is happening to fatherhood? What is happening to the social cohesion? Marriage is coming to an end because a man cannot even tell a woman, I love you. He's afraid. Men go their own way. Today, this principle where men choose not to have anything to do with women. A lot of men are beginning to associate themselves with the principle. They prefer staying apart. They prefer not even going near women, whether it's in the home or the workplace or wherever, because they fear. Men are living in fear of women and the women are enjoying it. They are not conscious of the effect on society as a whole. In our next video, we're going to go into details to talk about this, the, the ill effects of feminism on society. The death of fatherhood. The oppression of the male species. And how men can come back and be the men that God created them to be, to be, and be the father, and be a protector. For thousands of years, men, you have fought to defend your motherland. It's time for you to defend, to, to fight, to defend humanity, to defend human society. It's time now for you to fight to defend social cohesion because more and more children are without fathers. The input of a father in ch children's upbringing is, 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 is not, you, you, cannot, you cannot replace it with anything. It's non-negotiable. There is, there is a place for there is an input that a man, a male, a father must make into a child, just like a woman needs to make an input in the upbringing of a child. But today we think that it's okay because 40% of homes are led by women. So what is happening? More and more children are being brought up without a father. But the right thing to do is not to recoil into our shells. Men, don't recoil into your, shell, your shells. The right thing is to rise up and be the man that God has created you to be. And that's what we're going to go through. I'm going to come your way in the next video to bring to you more statistics and let you understand why you should get up and fight for generations for centuries, you fought for your motherland in wars abroad, in wars at home, in civil wars. Now the time has come for you to fight to save humanity. 
to save fatherhood because it is important. It is important. It's an, it's an important uh, foundation for human society. God is a father. And the very first father that a child knows is the human father. The child does not begin to know God at the age of one, at the age of six years, or six months, or one year. The first God that a child would ever know is the father. So the father models God in the eyes of the child. He first gets to know the father as God. And then later on, the father directs the child to God, the heavenly father. In the absence of an earthly father, of course, I'm not saying women cannot teach children to know God, but the fatherly figure is important. So we need to start, you know, churches have stopped preaching marriage, stopped doing marriage counseling, premarital pre marriage counseling, postmarital marriage counseling, we, we literally stop because in, in many cases, the pastors themselves have broken marriages. Their marriages are not good. So they don't, they don't feel competent to teach on marriage. We have to resume teaching of marriages. Men have to start talking. We need to start talking. We need to start crying. We need to start expressing ourselves like the women are doing. We have to break loose of the social construct that says we, we, we cannot cry, we cannot complain, we cannot talk. We have to break loose of those social constructs. We have to put away violence, whether it's, it's, it's verbal or physical violence. That's not the way, that's not what I advocate for. This battle is spiritual, it's social, it's cultural. And we have to take that fight. We begin by talking. We begin by letting what we feel, you know, what, what we feel be known by everybody. We begin to, by uh, ex freely expressing our thoughts to people. And that is what I'm advocating. So I'm asking men to rise up. Don't recall into your, sh your shells. Don't, don't commit suicide. Don't get depressed. Rise up and talk. Rise up and express yourself in groups, in churches, in group discussions, in the social media, in electronic media. Let us come together and begin to make our feelings heard. It's time for men to be heard. Women have been heard. We have heard everything and they need to, they can continue to talk when we hear them. We have to listen to them, yes. We will listen to them. But let us also begin to listen to men. And we cannot, people cannot listen to us if we are not talking. The time has come for men to speak. If you enjoyed this discussion, I encourage you to do the following. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment so that we know your feedback. And also, uh, I just want to thank those who have supported uh, financially to bring, uh, to make this video possible. God bless you and uh, thank you for watching.